All right, shade tree, jet ski time. And what I'm doing today is uh, I'm doing a uh, fuel pressure uh, balancing mod. And in order to do that mod, I've already kind of gotten ahead of what needs to be done, but I'll go ahead and talk the way through it. So what we're gonna have to do is get access to the carburetors, which I've already pulled all the boxes, but I'll show you what's gotta be done um, to get to this point. You've got this hose here, the quarter inch nut driver, pop that hose loose. You've got these, that's a seven millimeter, or you can use a flat. Loosen those, slide this boot back over here. There's gonna be two more clamps under there to get the next boot loose. You've only gotta loosen one side, and that's this side, because you're pulling this off. Um, you've got your engine pull mounts that mount here. There's three 14 millimeter bolts on each one. Well, one's a nut, it's on here. So it's 14, a 14, a 14, same here. And those look like this. You pull those off. All right, then you've got two 12 millimeter bolts. See the empty hole there? The empty hole there. I always wrap those 12 millimeter bolts with uh, electrical tape so that your socket will grab and pull them out. Makes it a lot easier. Um, then you have, and get down in here, see center screen, that's your temperature sensor. There's two 10 millimeter bolts on there. Here and here, those two have to come off. And you've got another quarter inch nut driver clamp you can put on. I think it'll also take a Phillips, just like this one. It's got a Phillips head on it. You've got to remove that hose. And then this whole exhaust will come out this way and up and out. Oh, I did forget to mention there is one 5 sixteenths nut right there that you have to take loose on the exhaust. Some people pull that strap to slide the exhaust back off of that boot however you want to do it. Then that whole piece will remove, come up and out in your carburetor. Um, I find it much easier to take the box off, which the box is four 10 millimeter. Boom, 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 boom. Of course, your flame arrestor screen is on it like this with the four tens. Um, you have to, before you can get to that, you've got this cover that has to come off. A lot of people have removed just like this ski. If the ski, if the ski's never been messed with, it's going to have four 10 millimeter bolts that are longer that are bolting the cover down. Most people remove those from the ski and only use these little plastic slides to slide into place to uh, deal with that cover. Um, and there's six of those. There's supposed to be two on the bottom, but this one's missing two. So, once you get all of that done, you'll have access to the carb, and I'll show you how we're gonna do this fuel pressure balancing mod, and maybe explain to you why it's done. Okay, I did forget to mention one bolt. It's a 14 millimeter that goes in this exhaust assembly it runs in horizontally into this right here into this bracket you don't have to mess with this one unless the alignment's way off um, and then one other thing you may want to move your plug wires out of your way that's up to you but you will have to take your plugs out to get these nuts off of here because the plugs are just uh, right in the way of uh, getting a wrench on those but there is one more thing on this exhaust, which is the uh, it's a Zerk fitting that runs down to that main bearing. It's on the back of this exhaust. I'll try to get it up and out where you can see it, because right now. Here's the Zerk fitting. See the hose? That's the only thing holding my exhaust in. I'll cut that tie wrap and get this thing on out of here. 
So here's what the piece you're taking out looks like. Uh, so it's on this line that you want to install a jet, a carburetor jet in line right after this fitting. So you'll shove a jet in there. And what that's doing is it's putting back pressure on the return system so that you have a balanced uh, fuel pressure between the two carbs because what tended to happen was um, you would get more fuel pressure in one carburetor than you would the other because you're just using a diaphragm pump system. There was a guy, and I think you can find his uh, mods online, Oside Bill. He's uh, no longer alive. But he had figured out every mod that you could do on a Yamaha, probably even Kawasaki's. He just, he came up with all kind of modifications that made these engines run better. Um, and that was one that is, they say is highly recommended to do, is to do this uh, modification on this uh, fuel return line. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, if your carburetor is running right, there's no need to pull it, but I'm going to rejet this one with some a little bit bigger jets than factory because they say it makes it easier when it's cold starting on these. Um, remembering that these have a little squirty primer system, which you can easily test by taking you a uh, white paper towel napkin. And it's, uh, here's your accelerator pump. If your pump isn't working, when you squeeze the throttle, have you a napkin sitting in here. And if you don't get that uh, fuel wetting on the uh, napkin, then you may have a clogged uh, jet on these from the accelerator pump. They come through, let's see, yeah, well, they come through right here. And right here, there's a little nozzle that sticks down into the Venturi up in the top and sprays. So that thing's going to be spraying that way. So you need to stick something in far enough this way. You can feel it with your finger. You'll feel, if you stick your finger in the uh, right-hand side, you can feel that little brass nozzle. It's got a tiny little opening. And whenever you clean your uh, carburetor, you want to make sure that... Uh, that opening is not clogged when you do a carb rebuild. And it's best to replace the diaphragm if you've got the carburetor out. I think I've, I've already put a Makuni kit in this one, um, but it just didn't seem to run right. Uh, these things can be kind of finicky. They're tough to get adjusted because here's your adjustment screws on the top and just you can't get to them with the exhaust system in place to make your adjustments. Um, if somebody has figured out a way to do it, please let me know because I have not found that easy to do. I've always had to pull it, make the adjustment, run it again, check your plugs, da 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 da. It's, so when I'm when I built one, what I do is I only attach my two twelves in my rubber boots. And you can just shove your temp sensor in. You want to put some grease or something on this so that it releases. But uh, that's the way I do it until I get the carb running right. And then I'll bolt everything down. Because it's kind of a pain to get everything out on this. A Kawasaki is much easier to pull a, a Kawasaki carb. You can do it in 10 or 15 minutes once you get good at it. But to remove this carburetor... Um, you've got your two pulse lines that are going to have to come off. You're going to have to pull just this, the one, see the white tie wraps that I've got on there. Well, that one's been replaced all white, but you can basically just pull this, this hose and this hose, leave those attached and, uh, pull your two vacuums, pulse lines. Then you've got four 10 millimeter bolts. There's one there. The other one is diagonally under here. I tilt it and see it. It's right there. And then the same on the other side. Boom and boom. Um, 
And then in the middle, there's two Allens. I think five sixteenths Allen wrench will fit that. Probably not gonna be able to see those too well. Um, and then of course your cabling system, all 10 millimeters. You gotta slip all these cables off. Um, easier to put them on with the carburetor up a little higher. I haven't found that these gasket base gaskets for this particular carburetor are extremely thin and they don't like being reused. So best to get a new one every time you pull this carburetor. I think I have one spare new one left. So hopefully I get this thing adjusted right and it'll be ready to run. But that's what I'm doing. I'm replacing the jets. I'll, I'll uh I've got a package here today from a jet ski store down in Florida. I'll see what uh, size jets he recommended. I can't remember. I think it was a .090 to put in for the return and then 92.5s or something like that for the, for the low speeds. We'll see. Yeah, here we go. Here's your part numbers. So I'm not going to have to graphically put it up on the screen, but there's a 90. So you get your high speed 90 shoved into the fuel line. And I bought two because I've got another 800 over there that I'm gonna do the mod on. It hasn't been done. But that is the WSM part number. You're gonna shove this in that return line. And uh, then my low speed jets going to a 92.5 and they say that helps with the idle so there you go and I bought another one of these for my next fuel sending unit that has a bad one because these are these are just uh, they're pretty much bad on all the old Yamahas so there's my jet. It fits perfectly in the fuel line. I'm gonna take a little you know, screwdriver or something, just shove it on down past the bulging part where I know the fitting goes. Um, and that's gonna fit perfectly and cause that uh, back pressure for the fuel system. And that's how that mod works. And remember, it's gotta be on your return. That'll show up. Return line. If you got factory lines, it'll show it. Well, there it is, shoved down in there. Probably gonna put uh, some kind of piece of tape or something on there. I wanna, I probably put something clear with a note saying that the mod has been done. So whoever I sell the ski to will know. I wish it, you know, if you had a service bulletin, you had right there, service bulletin number on whatever you've done. But basically that's, that's done. But I want to put something on this line to denote that the mod has been done. 